Boxing knockouts can be dramatic. All it takes is one well-placed shot landing perfectly on target. Performances that have had fans on the edge of their seats and on their feet in applause. That's why they say you should never blink during an all-action fight because you never know when it will end. And it can end quickly. Without further ado, here are our top 15 punches that shock the boxing world. There's a right hand and both his knees. Lewis would do brief work with Francois. With about 40 seconds left in the second round, Lewis was able to land a powerful combination with four punches that beat Francois halfway out of the ring. What he's doing is working. It's a big right hand. In October 2009, Abraham defeated Taylor via a devastating knockout in the 12th round. With only seconds remaining in the fight, Abraham landed a powerful straight right that pierced Taylor's gloves and put him out cold. In a rematch that took place in March 1996 in Las Vegas, Nevada, Mike Tyson TKO Frank Bruno in the third round. Tyson staggered Bruno early in the first round and cut his left eyelid towards the end of that round. Less than a minute into the third round, Tyson escaped a Bruno jab and went on to unleash a 13-punch combination that sent Bruno crashing into the ropes. In September 2009, David Chua dominated Shane Cameron, knocking him out in the second round. Shane was knocked down twice in the first round by Tua's devastating punches. In the second, however, Tua unleashed numerous hooks to the head of a vulnerable Shane, leaving him collapsed on the canvas. See, there's the right hand that I was telling you about. Rockman just caught him with the right hand. In April 2001, Lennox Lewis lost his heavyweight belts in a shocking fashion when he was floored by Haseem Rahman. Near the end of the fifth round, Rahman flattened Lewis with a stunning right hand in one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. Oh, he's got him! He's got him! Hit it again! It is! And Lewis has gone! Lewis's left hand It's absolutely nowhere near, and he let it go. Oh! What a shot. What a Check yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? In May 1993, Gerald McClellan faced reigning WBC middleweight champion Julian Jackson. McClellan and Jackson went at it from the very start. Then came the fifth round, when McClellan exploded with a massive right hand, followed by two lefts, knocking out the defending champion. Somehow, Jackson beat the count, only to be sent down again by another right. And there's a minute left to go. Can McCullough finish him off? He's down again. Julian Jackson does it's it. It's over. over. It's over. Bill Swain has stopped the fight. This fight was perhaps the most brutal of the trilogy with each man knocking the other down. By round five, Holyfield appeared to be completely exhausted. Nonetheless, in round six, he came back strong knocking Bo out for the first time in his professional career with a left hook to the chin. Down goes Bo. In round eight, Bo would return the favor, knocking Holyfield down twice, the first of only two times in Holyfield's career. The 
Bridget steps back. And a couple of good left hooks to the head by Briggs and follows it. Shannon reclaims a heavyweight title when he scores a dramatic knockout of his WBO title holder challenger. Shannon rocks his opponent with a right hand in the 11th and lands another that sends him to his knees, hanging between the ropes. He somehow gets to his feet, but Shannon follows up by pounding the champion and sending him falling through the ropes with only two seconds left in the fight. Oh, look out! Lohovich down through the ropes! A series of jabs as you look at the tail of the tape. In May 1981, these two heavyweight giants, who were at completely different stages of their respective careers, met at Madison Square Garden in New York. What followed proved to be disturbingly memorable. Cooney rushed out, stunning Norton with a right punch to the head, and then going to work on a helpless target in a terrifying manner. Misses two uppercuts but scores with combinations of left stance one straight out. Norton is about to drop. Norton is on his knees. The referee was far too slow in diving in, allowing a vulnerable Norton to take hard, damaging shots to the head. The fighters come out for round one. Joe Frazier goes right to work in black trunks. In his first title defense, Joe Frazier fought world light heavyweight champion Bob Foster in November 1970. Frazier, often a slow starter, came out smoking in the opening round. Then in round two, Frazier's famed left hook did its job. A crunching left to the jaw sent Foster down heavily. Foster got up before being sent back down by another vicious left hand. And Joe Frazier, a dynamite left hook and Bob Foster goes down again. It's all over. Joe Frazier wins by a sudden dramatic knockout. In that serious look, Ali definitely talking to him. Look at the stare on George Foreman. This fight was billed as the Rumble in the Jungle, an event that turned the entire boxing industry upside down. Prior to the fight, it looked that Foreman had the upper hand. He was younger, heavier, had a longer arm reach, and a stronger punch. However, all this did little to help the reigning champion. Throughout the fight, Ali did not leave Foreman a single chance. By the fifth round, the youngster began to tire, and in the eighth, Ali peeled himself off of the ropes and unleashed a barrage of quick punches on an exhausted Foreman. A left hook and a hard right caused Foreman to stumble to the canvas. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos. That was no phantom punch. That was no phantom punch.